Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. Unity 2018.1 brings new levels of control and flexibilities. One of the coolest features coming in 2018.1 is Shadow Graph. Whether you are a beginner or professional, it helps you create a range of shadows. Instead of hard writing code, you create and connect nodes in a graphic network. The graphic framework gives instant feedback on the changes, and it's simple enough that new users can become involved in shadow creation. In this episode, we are taking a look how to start with the shadow graph to make two simple visual effects. During the process, I will introduce some common nodes in shadow graph, including their descriptions and return values. Also, I will provide some tips and tricks for you to easily control the shadow graph. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can also choose to read the text version of this episode. Okay, let's get into it. To use the shadow graph in your project, either start a new project using a template that includes shadow graph, or download the lightweight render pipeline packages from a package manager. The shadow graph will be downloaded automatically for your use in either of these cases. Now we have opened up Unity. Go to Window and select Package Manager. Select All Packages options on here. Making sure you have installed the Shadow Graph in Package Manager. First, let's create one new scene. If you don't want to see the skybox on the game view, you can select Window, go to Rendering Options, and press the Lighting Settings. Then, replace the current default skybox material with Noom. Select the main camera. In order to change the background color applied it to the screen, we can select Solid Color and choose to the white color. Create a new folder called Shadows. Simply right-click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to 3 object, and select the cube. Then, change its size. Let's create a new material called Water Material. Drag this into a cube game object in the scenes. Double-check your shadow type is light white render pipeline light. To use Shadow Graph, you must first create a Shadow Graph asset. In Unity, a Shadow Graph asset appears as a normal shadow. To create a Shadow Graph asset, you click the Create menu in the project window and select Shadow from the drop-down. For here, you can create either a PBR or Unlight Shadow Graph asset. In this example, we choose to PBR Graph. This will create a shadow graph asset in the project. The PBR means physically based rendering. This is an approach in computer graphics that seeks to render graphics in a way that more accurately models the flows of light in the real world. Many PBR pipelines have an accurate simulation of photorealism as they are goal based. Another selection is unlight graph. You don't need lighting for your effects or unique objects because there is no time-consuming lighting, calculations, or lookups. This shadow is optimal for lower-end hardware. The Unlight Shadow uses the most simple shadowing model in lightweight render pipeline. Back to Unity, you can double-click on the assets to bring up the Shadow Graph Edit window. When you open the Shadow Graph, you start with the Master Node. You connect nodes into the master node to create the look of your surface. The master node is one special kind of node. It's the end of the shadow graph that defines the final surface appearance of the shadows. Your shadow graph should always contains one and only one master node. The master node will automatically handle the conversions of the shadow between different script render pipelines if there is an available bankhead. There are two terminologies I need to explain first. One is called port. Port defines an input or output on a node. Connecting edges to a port allows data to flow through the shadow graph node network. Each port has a data type which defines what edges can be connected to it. Each data type has an associated color for identifying its type. 
Victor one type color is blue. Victor two color is green. Victor three color is yellow, and Victor four color is pink. Another is called edges. Edges defines a connection between two ports. Edges defines how data flows through the shadow graph node network. They can only be connected from an input port to an output port. You can try to click the input albedo and change the main color of the object. We want to finally make one water shadow. We can Google the keyword water texture to find one 2D texture. For this to work, we need to drag this 2D SS image to our project. To add a node, simply right-click and select Create Node. Search for Texture 2D Assets. This node defines one constant Texture 2D Assets for use in the shadow. Select our water texture. We can try to click the output and connect with the input albedo. You will notice that there is one drop-down menu appear on the screen instead of one complete connection edges because they need another node for connection. And you will notice that only these nodes can establish the connections with these two nodes. To sample the texture 2D assets, it should be used in conjunctions with a sample texture 2D node. Connect with each other, and you can see our object has one water texture now. Inside the main preview window, we can right click and select different objects for your surface and hold left mouse button to check it out in different angles. The second part is Import UV. Let's create one UV node. The letter U and V represent the axis of the 2D texture because XYZ are already used to represent the axis of the 3D object in the model space. UV mapping is the 3D modeling process of projecting a 2D image to a 3D model surface for texture mapping. So UV defines each point detail information on this texture. Each point has the connections with the 3D model, which can determine the position of the surface texture. UV will correspond each accurate point with the surface of the model object. Why is UV color looks like this? In terms of the color, we know that the UV has two axes. U and V. We can look them as X and Y. Actually, there is the same type as vector 4 type value, such as X, Y, Z, W, and R, G, B, A. So, if the U is the R, V is G, we can make two images, red and green. If there is only one unit in this map, we can use graded color to create two images from 0 to 1. 0 means RGB value is 0, 0, 0. Finally, if we try to overlap these two images and choose to one blend mode, you will notice that we will receive one image looks like our UV node color. This is the reason why our UV node has this color. We can use UV to projectile one 2D image to 3D model surface for texture mapping. You can connect the output from UV node with the input UV on the sample texture to the UV port. I can promise you nothing will happen. But if you want your texture looks more density, you can find another node called tiling and offset. Tiling and offset is commonly used for detail maps and scoring texture over time. Let's change the tiling value to 3. Your sample texture looks more density because your water texture has been laid out in three rows and three columns in the same size. Tiling means amount of tiling to apply per channel. If you want to see more clearly, we can change the tiling value to 8. You will notice that there is 8 plus 8 water texture now. You can use tiling value to make your texture look more density. For offset ports, we can simply drag its value to see the effect. We want our water behaves like in the real world instead of manually dragging its offset value. So we have to do something on this offset. Times node can provide access to various time parameters in the shadow. Each output returns one vector 2 value. 
I'm concerned with the speed of the water flow. Simply right click and select slider. The slider nodes defines one constant value. You can manually change the value by dragging the slides field. The default maximum value is 1. We can change the maximum value to 3. We want to use slider to control the speed of water flow. In other words, we need to use the slider node to change the time value. Let's create a new node called multiply node, which returns the result of input A multiplied it by input B. If both inputs are a vector type, the output type will be a vector type. Now we can easily use the slider to control the speed of water flow. We can try to use the sign time, the range of the sign value from negative 1 to 1. So our water flow will look like this. Press the save access buttons and switch bank, making sure you have selected the cube game object. Drag the water shadow into here. Perfect. I'm going to show you one quick way to set your camera transform component. Select the main camera game object. Press Command or Control Shift F to align with view. Finally, if you want to see these two different conditions and switch the sign time with normal time, you can create one Boolean node, then create one branch node providing a dynamic branch to the shadow. If input predictive is true, the return output will be equal to input true, otherwise it will be equal to input false. Both sides of the branch will be calculated in the shadow, even if one is never output. If you want to change the texture color, we can create one color node and use multiply node to achieve. Cool. Now we have familiar with some common nodes in Shadow Graph. We are going to use these nodes to create one simple holographic projection effect by using Unlight Graph. Simply right click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to 3D object and select the plane. I have prepared one Unit 2D logo by Adobe Illustrator. Drag these assets into project. Create one new material and drag this material to our 3D plane. Then, create a shadow graph assets in the project. You can double click on the assets to bring up the shadow graph edit window. When you open the shadow graph, you start with a master node. Since we want to make one simple holographic projection effect, we also need one 2D texture assets. To sample the texture 2D assets, it should be used in conjunction with a sample texture 2D node. Connect the output RGBA with the input color on master node. Now we can right click on main preview window and choose to view the result. I'm not too much concerned with the logo color. If you want, you can create one color node to change the main color. Then using multiply node to return the result of input A multiplied it by input B. Save the assets and go back to Unity. Drag the shadow assets into here. Select the main camera game object. Press Command or Control Shift F to align with view. Now we drag another 2D texture inside our project. We want to overlap these two images to complete the first step of this effect. We can use the sense step to create another texture 2D assets node and sample texture 2D node. 
then using multiply node to combine our first texture with the new texture. Then connect the output with the input color on master node. First, let's remove the black background color. Click the gear icon on the top right of the corner on master node. Select transparent option. The blend mode is additive. Save the assets and switch bank. If you cannot see the result on the game view, you can go to main camera and change the solid color on inspector. Now let's start to make the holographic effect. I create another texture for this effect. Drag this 2D texture into project. Change the second texture to a new one. Remember, we use offset to make water flow. We create another node called tailing and offset node again. If we drag the offset x value, the second texture will move horizontally. We can also use the time node which provides access to various time parameters in the shadow. Since we only want our second texture move in vertical axis, which means we want the offset x value always stay zero. We use vector2 node to achieve because as we know, zero multiply any number is equal to zero. We set vector2 x value to zero. We use multiply node to combine time node with vector2 value. Now we can control the vector2 y value to change the move speed. Perfect. Alright, this is the end of this video. To learn more about the underlying material models, check out the existing Unity Standard Shadow document. You can download the project from the description below. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. In the next video, we will continue to talk about more basic nodes in Shadow Graph and provide another example for a new effect. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.